Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of Comrade X8 episode 43. So, I'm getting down to the wire here. I think that next week is our last episode, like a regular episode, and then we'll probably get... I forgot to look this up, but like we'll probably get the build epilogue type thing, where it's still an X8 episode, but it's kind of epilogue-y like they've done the last two years, so like, I feel like this is the penultimate episode for like the regular finale or like the pen penultimate episode if they're not doing the build thing. But the point is, things are narrowing down, and it was pretty good. It's kind of funny, because X-8's in a weird place where it's good, and I am curious, obviously, and invested to find out where they're going, but it's kind of interesting to not have any dangling mysteries or questions or anything like that. I feel like, for the most part, it's just very straightforward. It's like, more just about ending a, a certain conflict, it's just a matter of how they're going to end it. And uh, it's a weird way of phrasing. I'm trying to make it not sound like I'm not disinterested because I'm definitely not. I'm really invested. It's just, I was just thinking about it in this episode, how sometimes in other series, they're sort of dangling questions in a way, uh, in a much more prevalent way than this, where it just seems like we just know what has to be done, just a matter of how we get there, which is sort of ending Common Rider Chronicle. And so, last week, Dan, or Dan's dad, uh, had absorbed, um, they're both Dan's is their last name, uh, but absorbed Gemdis and this week was seeing it merge with the Kronos system into like one hybrid thingy which is pretty cool looking it's like all golden and it's got some some colored bits from Gemdis and it's got his weapons and stuff and I still prefer standard Kronos because I think like the green and black sells the video game a bit more but so he's all super strong and then he's like well the only opponent only opponent could be somebody in Kamen Rider Chronicle like Nico who has all the uh, the trophies but then um, it, it came down to being about Taiga and like the fact that he's been fighting this for years and I thought it was a really good culmination of this part of his arc um, of him being the first writer in this world and uh, wanting to end it and like it's, it's funny because I feel like I actually didn't give some of the characters in x enough credit for actually being pretty good characters and I'll be interested when I rewatch it to see how it comes off because Taiga I think always has been in some ways one of my more favorites but this was just a good like ending bit for him not ending because it's not fully over yet but I mean a culmination of that arc, kind of like with Brave's uh, arc with his fiance, it was that was kind of the culmination of that, and then a uh, week, week or two ago, the culmination of the Graphite arc with those two, because that was tied to to Snipe's early days, but this was more about it just in general, like how, the the weight he felt about the responsibility of not stopping it years ago and being the first writer, and then that combined with his affection for Nico, it was just cool to see, and like he went into the game and he actually transformed into Kronos, which I thought was really cool. And I kind of had wished that when they did the final fight with all three of them, he just stayed in Kronos. Just, I don't know. I thought it would be cool. Because that could kind of be his version of getting a final upgrade, since he didn't get one. Um, like the other guys. Um, but that's beside the point. It was just kind of neat visually, and I guess in like thematically in a way, to see... Um, even though it was like a Gemdis Kronos hybrid, just to see those two fight. Both for the purposes of like, like Taiga's plot and stuff, but just for the fact that, you know, Gemdis and, uh, and the Chrono system were supposed to be the final battle for Kamen Rider Chronicle, if it had gone down as a normal game, you know, because Gemdis was the final boss, and then Kronos was originally just supposed to be, like, this is the final power-up you get. So I thought that was kind of cool for that. Um, and there was a really nice moment when um, he admitted he wanted to be a doctor, uh, when he wanted to protect Nico because she was his patient, which was cool on multiple levels because there was that whole storyline with, uh, I think it was the Tokumeki Crisis Bugster, um, which had some annoying stuff, but was good character beats for those two. Uh, it was a good, uh, I'm trying to think of the word I was trying to say. It was, it was like a good combination, if that's a, the right word, of, uh, on two levels of that, when he talked, he, they kind of laid out that that relationship worked because she saw him as a doctor and he hadn't been seen as a doctor in a long time. And the fact that like, he said, you know, you're my patient, I have to protect you. And then it was also a callback to last week, I think, when um, Taiga, not Taiga, uh, Hiro was thanking Taiga for his help. And he said, like, you'd be a good doctor or something like that. And he said, I don't know if I want that anymore. So I thought it was just like a good resolution, I guess, to those two parts of his storyline with Nico and the patient bit and last week questioning whether he'd want to go back to that so he finally admitted he wanted to be a doctor again he got, i like how this is the end uh like uh trophy it's like everyone's getting you get a white coat you get a white coat like because uh kiriha got his last week and then taiga got his this week like will 
will uh, Dan get one next week just for the hell of it? But so he got his coat, like I, I knew it was coming right away when like M showed up and he had it in his hand. I thought it was kind of funny. But also a nice moment for the culmination of that arc. Culmination is the word of this review apparently. Um, but yeah, so that was neat. Um, I also found it funny that, you know, because Taiga got into Chronicle because he started playing the game and they couldn't figure out how to get in. And it was Dan that gave him a cheat code, which again, I thought was really fun use of video game mechanic logic, and it was funny because it tied back to the episode opening with him trying to convince them to let him out and let the Ministry let him out. So, like, Dan got let out and used a cheat code to get him all in, and uh, Kronos was like, how the hell did you get here? And, and M said, we had some, some godly talents, um, or some godly divine intervention. Yeah, enter quote mode, end quote mode. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny. And then they sort of defeated him for this time, and now we're into the, the final conflict is everyone's infected and they're actually turning into full-on bugster henchmen thingies. I forget if they have a specific name. They probably do, but I'm just forgetting it. I uh, Leave it in the comments. But, like, everyone's turning into that and they just so much as touch someone and they get infected. And, again, another kind of cool, just, it's basic, but it's cool use of video game logic of, like he said, when the, when the boss gets defeated, there's usually like a second stage and they get more powerful. Some days, three stages, so we never know, but he turned into a giant CGI character, which they're using the recolor of in the movie, it looks like. Um, well, I don't know which was the original, which is the recolor, but, um, but it's kind of like, they did the same thing with Ghost. That is funny now, thinking about it with the, uh, the, I can't even remember the name of the final villain. The presenters? No, that was Forze. But, like, they used the same, like, big villain suit in the Ghost movie and in the series finale. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing here with the recolor, but I just liked that use of, I kind of was expecting it, like, um, of like, oh, when you beat the boss, there's a second stage, or the more powerful true form, and so that was kind of neat. Makes sense for the video game logic, and it's leading to a pretty big conflict for next week. And I'll have to look up after I finish filming this, which I probably should have looked it up before I started filming it, but if, like, the episode titles out or a mini description of like whether the final episode is going to be an epilogue with build or if we're just going to get two straight up more x8 episodes but regardless super close to the end it's actually it kind of came up on us quick i felt like between just getting into it and uh wanting to see the episodes each week and then finding out we have a few episodes shorter than the average it just seemed like it all happened so quickly like it i know we're, we're regardless of, of whether we had 45 or 48 we'd still be getting close-ish to the end of the series, but it still just now seems crazy that within a matter of a couple weeks, x is going to be over and build starting. It just seemed to happen really fast this year. But yeah, anyway, for the episode, good episode, 8.5. Looking forward to next week and seeing how everything ends. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Dawson Ryder, signing out.